Good morning, folks. This is the free internet program called Stellarium. You can go to stellarium.org and get it. You can import orbital elements for comets, asteroids, etc. Put yourself anywhere on the world, night or day, or on other worlds. Now, the moon is going to be visible in the daytime, but I'm here right now to illustrate how sundown tonight will reveal the moon high in the sky but having a yet unseen companion in King Zeus. Aldebaran and Pleiades in tow should be beautiful. Every time NASA shows these alleged ship trails going across the Pacific, you get people screaming that they are chemtrails. Obviously, my first thought as well. But look at these things compared to Baja or other forms. These chemtrails or ship trails are tens of miles wide in addition to hundreds of miles long. That one's got to be 50 miles wide. What plane or ship is doing that? This is something else. For a second day in a row, New Zealand takes a moderate tremor. When the quakes get a little larger than this on the Pacific Ridge, I begin to worry about Chile, Bolivia, and Peru. An avalanche in the Scottish Highlands trapped four climbers. Meanwhile, in Nepal, an extreme lightning strike has taken out power infrastructure, damaged electronics, and knocked 12 people unconscious. Yikes. Low off the Queensland coast never developed fully. It still might, or it may just thrash about up there for another two days. I've been discussing brutal Eastern European weather. In addition to the winter weather in the UK, the leading edge of these lows now dumped a ton of precipitation on Western Europe. Wind speeds topped 140 kilometers per hour, but at least they're keeping warm comparatively. Quickly, here's the precipitation zones for the rest of the world this evening. And while the Weather Channel decided to go PG-13 on us, they're not wrong. This is only the beginning, too, as the cool down is coming with the northern air rushing south, creating wind and winter watch zones that should extend up into Canada, just use your imagination. Temperature delta may get even scarier tomorrow. Cosmic ray density falling, near 99 right now. The big CME has struck around 1700 UTC yesterday. First wave hit, and we are just now even taking more pressure. You can see the disturbance began around 1700, getting worse now. Same thing induced. The end of it we'll have to wait for tomorrow, but we can still check out the auroral electrojet on the Ovation Prime. You see the charged particles and current that was causing that induction. And if we take a step back before the plasma reached the electrojet, got caught up in the compressing magnetic field during impact and guided back to Earth at the polar region. Voila, the auroras. There was a significant eruption on the sun yesterday, just a few moments after I posted to YouTube. The eastern limb filament destabilized and ripped away from the sun. Unfortunately, as you watch the timestamps below, SOHO is missing data. Same with the stereo spacecraft, and there's nothing on the Enlil spiral. The dark coronal hole turns into the earth-facing position today. Plasma filaments posing eruption threat all around it, and possibly another CME on the way. Say goodbye to 11564. Eyes open. No fear at 621 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.